and gives us the option to leave meeting. <laughs> I, I, Which I, I will, find uh, most like I said, disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna go take a look at, I haven't looked at the settings. Yeah. Like if I can turn that off or anything yeah. like, like that. If, like if you remember 2001 A Space Odyssey, it's like, okay. what are you doing, Bob? <laughs> it's kind of how it feels when it asks me if I want to leave the meeting. <laughs> It's just a, I don't see that because I'm the host. Is it just a pop up window? Yeah, it's a pop up. up. It's, yeah, it's a pop up. It's just a pop up window that, that shows up. Right. So let's see. Would I'll start? Um, would anybody like to facilitate next week? I've been facilitating these for kind of a while and just seeing if we'd like to rotate at all. If not, I can. Let me see what I'm just looking at my next week. Always oh, it's, I can I can I can do next week because I don't have evolution right beforehand. So I won't okay. be burnt facilitation out. And I, I know will, and sometimes it's hard to prepare like two of these in a row. Exactly. But so I'm gonna indicate this to myself by changing the color. Okay. I always put like super important stuff in like I change the color to like this bright red. So it reminds me there's something something super important about that meeting and in right. this case, it's that I'm host. I'm, I am facilitating. Well, all right. Well, thank you, Sean. Yeah. Um, I would like to just have everybody, if you're in the minutes, I see Nick's there, Emily, I'm there. Um, Kevin and Sean, are you in the minutes as well? I haven't put myself there yet, no. Can you meander? I will do that there? right. Yep, I will do that right away. Because what I'd like to do is just take like a minute or two. You know how sometimes we go through issues and pull requests just to yeah. kind of see where we're at, like in each of the working groups. Could you just take a minute or two and I'll yeah. pause the recording to just go back through our notes yeah. and see if there's anything in the notes that you feel like we've forgotten about or yeah. you know, could, could use a little and we could draw that forward again. So just... Take I'm still loading the page, by the way. I, Google gave us trouble. Gave us trouble in the last meeting, and it's giving me trouble again. Okay. Um, still well, loading. When you get there, just take yeah. a minute oh, and there scroll, scroll, okay. scroll through. You get the you get the idea here. Just take yep, a look. I got it. So, so Sean, you were talking about um, yep. uh, bandwidth. Yep. Are you gonna, are you gonna make it yep. out there? Uh, yeah, I'll make it out right there. It's, um, okay. Kevin, was there anything that you had seen? Sorry. Uh, actually, right before this meeting started, I was looking at the uh, documentation discoverability uh, metrics. So I okay. went ahead and uh, I went ahead and merged the pull request that Elizabeth had put in. Oh, okay, uh, thanks. And I and I edited that existing issue to reflect that it's the. Uh, the issue that was there to reflect that it's uh, an under review issue. So, okay. Uh, I know it, in the meeting yesterday, I had said that maybe it was a better idea to create a new issue, but uh, I think it's okay. Probably better to, maybe it's better to keep all the conversation close together around that. Okay. Okay. So you just, you just drew that forward because I have this on the minutes art too. So documentation discoverability down there. Yep. I moved it forward. So the next step is actually on my end. I will actually, I'll move it to the website. So, okay, cool. Uh, um, there. Nick or Emily, were there any things in the minutes that you saw, like from prior meetings that you think we should, that we don't want to lose track of? Nick, I know you haven't been in this call, call for a while, so no pressure. No, I feel like we're pretty much working on everything that, um, that like, for example, the event demographics that's still here. Um, I think the other thing was like the, survey that we were sending out yeah so okay. yeah okay okay cool hi justin just so you know we were just spending a little bit of time you don't have to do it, but we were just spending a little bit of time going back through our prior minutes just to make sure that we're not losing anything i know we use issues and prs to kind of keep track of things but sometimes you know how it is with minutes we take ideas and then weeks advance and we we kind of forget about some of the things that we write down. So if there's anything, and you could do this while the meeting's going on, but if there's anything that you're thinking that we're forgetting about, that we talked about in weeks past, 
that would be cool. And you can just put it in this second point right here. You know what I mean? Just to make sure we don't lose things. Um, so Emily, to, to your question about the survey, right now I'm gonna pause this for a second. Um, we, right now, the survey, because this is funded by the Ford Foundation to do the self-reflection, we had to take the survey and put it under a review here at the university. Okay. And so right now it's been submitted and we're just waiting for the university to approve it to make sure that it's, you know, that we're doing, doing the right thing with the survey. Right. So anytime that we are looking at amending it, do we have to send it back for approval or? No, as long as is you in the, in this, usually it's kind of like in the spirit of the survey Okay. is, is okay. So if we amend a question or um, like sometimes as you probably know, like a survey question, people are like, I don't understand that at all. And then right. we just have to rewrite it into two questions or something like that. That's okay. We don't have okay. to get it pre-approved. Pre all right, that makes sense. Thank you for clarifying that. Yep. All right, cool. Okay, Justin, you're adding things. All right. I don't have this Google Doc lag. <laughs> I keep making these huge page drops. Are, are you having Are you having Google lag as well? Yeah, the Google Doc lag. Uh, yeah, it's really slow for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm me too. And I've got. I'm like. I'm showing like nearly a gig up and down. Like I've got super fast home internet, so I know it's not me. All right, so I'll put this, let's um, archive <laughs> the, the like older minutes. Didn't, I thought Matt Snell, Matt Cantu had done this. Kevin, didn't he do this? I could have sworn. Uh, yes, he did. Okay. So how far back? I'm kind of curious right now. I'm not sure. How far back are minutes go at this point? They still go back pretty far. So go back to 2018. Uh, it's not just it was it's not just this doc. It was uh, all of the docs we were hitting in our last meeting. So how long is how big is the evolution doc? Uh, that's a good, good question. Um, it's probably too big. <laughs> okay, so let's, I'm gonna, let's connect when Matt is back. With Matt to, okay, cool. Yeah, it looks as though we have not done any of the prescribed archiving uh, okay. It's uh, 48 pages <laughs> dating back to 2019. Okay. <laughs> so the idea was is that we would like keep, what was it, Kevin? Do you remember? It was like six months, maybe a year, and archive the rest. You're muted, Kevin. Sorry, I, I keep on hiding my video yeah. screen behind the document. So hold on just one. Uh, I have to pause for just a second. Okay. I think we'd talked about a year. Uh, okay. And doing the archive right around the, uh, I think the the, the March release, metrics okay. release, so, and that matches, I believe, when uh, Matt Snell had, uh, or Can't when do. Matt had, uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> still not, uh, still not used to the the new last name. Yeah. Uh, uh, when he, uh, when he had uh, archived. Uh, Diverted, where did the uh, do you know where the archive do you know where the archive is not. it okay. should be in the shared chaos folder like we have a chaos google user all right we just need to figure this out okay so there there was a i know there was some there was some discussion of archiving it in markdown form rather That's than what I google too. doc form yeah. so i believe the i believe the goal was to pull it from the google markdown or from the google doc into github markdown and then store it in the, either in the working group repository or like a new archive the, repository or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm not sure where he put it, uh, but okay. uh, I believe he did do it. <laughs> Thank you. That's helpful. Thank you. Um, 
Let's see. Okay. Um, Justin, did you put this last, the zooming out to a higher level comment? That was me. Could, could you me to talk up, just speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So this is just one thing that I know from some of our other conversations, we've been really focused on the metrics in these categories. I'm just wondering if it would help to revisit and just take a look at these categories again, maybe with the working group more widely, knowing that some folks come in some some weeks and some folks come in other weeks. Um, I'm just wondering if that if that's something that would be worth like a yeah. going deeper into a meeting discussion. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I don't think we've ever done that. So I, from, I'll just, I'll share my screen to kind of explain what I think you're getting at. So if I take a look at um, the DNI or the DEI focus areas, we have event diversity, oops, sorry, contributor community diversity, communication, and so on and so forth. And so I think Justin's saying like, is row 27, 34, 42, are these appropriate headers? Is that what you're talking about? And then, mm -hmm. okay. I'm just revisiting and seeing, are there things that yeah. are missing now? Cause I'm not sure when was this list first drafted? Gosh, it's been a couple of years and, and I, you're hundred percent correct. Kind of once those rows get established like 27, 34, 42, we don't ever relook at them. We kind of take them as like a truth, <laughs> yeah. even just moving forward. And, and you're right, we don't. So that's a great idea. It's actually something that we should probably be doing in every working group. And it, every work, uh, working group might be like, yep, they're totally good. Thanks for, uh, you know. Common, yeah. common and value has actually common value and evolution. We've uh, all three of those okay. working groups have reevaluated Re their focus areas. Oh, okay, great. Uh, and renamed them over the, okay. over the few years. All right, cool. So maybe we should do this. All right. Well, if there's precedent, even even better reason to do it. Awesome. Um, I, I like that. Why don't? Can I put that on next like next week's Justin? I think that's a nice idea. Yeah, I can post a little blurb to the mail the D diversity inclusion list. Yeah, that would be great. To give folks, a heads up. Okay. Cool. Just to Thank you. just to let you know, by the way, evolution is working on the. Uh, something that's very closely related to the recognition of good work focus area. Well, it's, uh, it's deciding who gets for what kind of recognition. Uh, so contribution credit. Yeah. So. And it's, it's um, this is Matthew Tip from Drupal, who is kind of, they have a system for doing it, but the system really raises a lot of credit granting and review of credit granted kinds of questions that I think are important. Kevin, are you suggesting this might be redundant with that or? Uh, oh, no, no, I'm just, uh, I'm okay. just saying that there's, uh, there's something related. Uh, and uh, no, no, the DE, DEI working group is, is welcome to, to work on areas in that focus area. It's not a, not a competition between working groups. So. Right. Well, thank you, everybody, for taking a look. This is helpful. Um, so I just wanted to make a note on ChaosCon. So this is around the top of page two. So at some point, um, we're going to have a keynote speaker for ChaosCon. So I can't, it sounds like so, there's going to be some form of ChaosCon that happens, whether it's in person and then kind of a uh, tape delay like that you had suggested yesterday, Kevin, you know, where we post the videos and have people participate kind of a week later, which is a cool idea or totally in person period. We don't do a tape delay, whatever the kind of thing is, but at some point we're going to probably be trying to identify a keynote speaker. And I thought maybe it would be great to, for the DEI working group to think about, um, a person at an organization who, you know, is, is really involved in the DEI work at that organization. And they could speak to like how they think about DEI with respect to the open source communities that matter to that organization, how they think about DEI with respect to their open source contributors. 
you know, within the company, like how they, and so I, I, we haven't talked about a, a speaker at all in the events team, but I mean, if, if we could think of one, I'm suspecting if we could think of one in the DEI working group and bring that person forward, that would be well received would be my, my guess. Um, so I, I don't know what people's thoughts are on this, is trying to originate a keynote speaker from this working group. For ChaosCon? Yeah. I mean, I can think of one that we know of who's probably pretty busy, and I don't know if I want to say who that person is on a recording, mm -hmm. but I caused her some pain yesterday um, <laughs> by editing something too much. Uh -huh. So I should um, be a great candidate, but okay. maybe we should talk to her before we put her name out. Something yeah, so maybe like before names, what do people think about kind of even trying to originate a keynote speaker from this working group? Yeah, I think that's a great idea, honestly. And okay. what are the what are the dates for ChaosCon? Just so I can check, you know, yeah, sure. bring some fillers out there. Um, it's the day before was the summit in North America. No, it's the day after. After, oh, okay. Right, we determined that yesterday. So it's going to be, it looks like it's going to be the 30th, Emily, of September. Okay. Because I, know someone, uh, I think there might be a conflict with OSPOCON, but I'll, I'll just check on it. Okay. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about is that. It, is it too early to uh, start presenting or uh, discussing the... Uh, results of our kind of internal DEI uh, reflection that, that, that might be that might be a nice keynote uh, so, to yeah. reflect on the, the DEI of our organization and mm -hmm. you know what we can do better going forward so OSPO kind of currently is this is overlapping with OSS Summit with Europe in Seattle yeah they're, they're actually, they actually combined the three events so okay yeah all right so this is a, if, if we were to do the evolving uh, situation. <laughs> if we were to do the the DEI reflection based on chaos, there's there's probably someone on this call right now that we could nominate for that. Um, Justin, did you have thoughts at all? I saw you unmuted temporarily. Oh no, I was just looking at this now and. I just noticed the location is no longer in Ireland. So <laughs> I, yeah, well, they, they well, welcome, yeah. welcome yeah. to the <laughs> I just caught that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We as we were applying to them, we saw stuff changing. I was like, whoa, it's not in Dublin anymore. It is now in Seattle. And it's a part of two other conferences. So yeah. So yeah, I triple wow. Open is going to be a co-host uh, sponsor for OspoCon. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what kind of originally in non-adjacent dates. Mm -hmm. So. So even, okay, so, and so Kevin, to your point, like the results of our own reflection, I think that's a something that should be in chaos count one way or the other, like whether it's a keynote or whether it's a, like a, just a regular talk. I think that's really interesting. I think people would like to see those results and talk through those results. Um, and I will say the date, the September 30th date, I think is pretty fixed for us. Cause if you look at the schedule, that's when they're doing their like cursory events or whatever you want to call them or whatever they call them. Um, and it looks like we're going to do a half a day. So it's not going to be long at all. So yeah, that's kind of what we decided. And we, we are planning for hybrid. And, um, so there still seems to be a good deal of hedging. Okay. Well, it seems like the general sun is yes, that it would be maybe a good idea to, to propose a keynote that could. Um, that, that would be somebody who, focus. Yeah, somebody who focuses on, on DNI as part of the work that they do at, at whatever organization they're at. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, well, thank you for thoughts on that. Um, Kevin, I think you kind of updated us on the next one, which was the documentation discoverability. It sounds like you had gone ahead and merged the pull request and updated the issue. Yep. I'll have it. It'll okay. be on the website later today. Okay. Can you drop the issue in here real quickly? I mean, I can get it too. Yes. Just a second. Okay. 
It's in the chat and I'm going to put it in the document now. All right. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Um, so that's an update on that. Um, so then if, if folks could take a look at, and I'm going to ask Kevin probably again, logistically the best way to get this next item done. So we, um, based on the DEI event badging program, we kind of realized that speaker demographics and attendee demographics were overlapping a lot and keeping these two metrics separate was just kind of silly that we could just do a filter. Like we could ask, just ask questions about event demographics with respect to speakers and with respect to attendees. So the proposal that we've been talking about for weeks that everybody seems to be okay with is getting rid of speaker demographics, getting rid of attendee demographics and making a single metric called event demographics. And then down the road, we would make another metric called project demographics. But I think this is done. And so you could click on that link that's there. And Justin, I think I, in that, your comment, you had a comment in event demographics that I tried to address. So I think it should be okay. Your comment was essentially like, there are some events that are um, like a women's hack hackathon where just like asking questions about gender aren't necessarily um, relevant in that case. And so just trying to Im improve this comment about including gender, gender identity, age, first language, and or disability. But there are ways that you can think about um, diversity that it's not just gender that may be. Um, so anyway, hopefully that takes care of your comment there. I think it covers it for for my perspective, but maybe it would be helpful to like flag that line in the meeting agenda, just since I know, get some wider feedback on it. I don't know, I just feel, it feels like one that would be helpful to get some no problem. Well, we can, we can um, move this into the community review period and then continue to highlight it for a month. You know what I mean? And specifically point out that line for people to, and if they have a, a question about it, we can make modifications during that time. Makes sense. Okay, cool. So um, does anybody else have comments on this metric? It's a pretty, Pretty narrow uh, it's, down. Using, it's using the old template. Uh, what is? You need to add, need to add contributors to it. Oh, okay. Uh, which I'm doing now. Thank you. Uh, and I would uh, request that the individuals on the call that worked on this metric add their name. I can do that. How should we do it? Should we do it with like like points, or is it just like a list like? Matt, comma, Kevin, comma, Justin, comma, you know what I mean? Uh, in On the website in the past, we've used the comma approach. Uh, okay. I'm actually not sure how it's, I, have we released a metric since the template changed? I don't think so. So I, I suppose this working group gets to decide the format. I vote bullet points. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. Muted. Add yourself if you feel like you've made a contribution to the metric at the bottom. Or if you're aware of someone else who contributed to the uh, uh, metric, would it be appropriate to add them? Yeah. Like, I know that Elizabeth has been part of this. <laughs> I know yeah. that Matt. Matt has been part of this. I mean, gosh, Georg, this, I mean, some of these metrics yeah. go back so far because this one yeah. is actually a merge of two pretty old metrics. Is 
And maybe to Justin's point about kind of highlighting that thing about over the course of the next month or so, we can continue to say, don't forget, if you have contributed, please add yourself. All right, um, so event demographics, I'm making some notes here. Sweet's agenda. I wonder if that 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 line would be helpful to actually add to the uh, to the editor, you know, kind of a contributors. Uh, if you worked on this metric, please submit a pull request or something like that to, to add your name. Just to... what's your thought? I'm I'm wondering if it would be helpful to add a note about contributors to the uh, to the actual metric template. Probably it's so. A, that's something to the effect of uh, don't be shy if you worked on this metric. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Admit a PR and add your name. Okay. okay. Um, so, Kevin, what's, what do you think the best way here is to, to move this forward? Because we are going to be removing two metrics and adding one. So do you have thoughts on how to do that most efficiently? Uh, so the, the first step in the release is, is the turning this into markdown. So once this, once there's a pull request into the, the diversity and inclusion repo for this metric, that basically, that starts the release process. So, uh, we need to add uh, at the top of this metric. We need to add the disclaimer, uh, which it's basically it's a disclaimer that just says this metric is under review. Uh, and then we link to a an issue to collect the comments for this metric. So the pull request for this metric and the creation of the issue should occur kind of at the same time because you need to have the uh, issue to link to, right? So when that, when that issue is created and this metric is, the pull request is made, that basically moves, this, moves everything forward, right? So the next step then is to, to move it to the website. So then should in the release notes, something be added that says this metric is gonna be added and we're gonna remove event yes, yeah. so the speaker and attendee demographics. Yeah, in the, in the release notes, you'll need to, uh, uh, yeah, basically add where that you're deleting or merging those those two metrics together. Okay. Uh, and then as far as the review process goes for those two metrics that are being deleted, uh, I suppose it's probably appropriate to keep them live until the review process is done. And at that point, we would delete them or, okay. ar or archive them in some fashion. Okay. Uh, Okay. But you think for adding this new metric, I think the only thing that needs to really happen, at least in terms of signaling that there's two metrics that are being removed is in the release notes. I just make that note. Well, I mean, if we're, if we're really following the process, if the, like the formal process, the way it's outlined, then each of those metrics that we are potentially deleting would need to have its own issue to collect the comments. Uh, and then additionally, we would need to add the disclaimer to those two metrics that we're proposing to delete. Uh, if we were if we were completely following the process, that's I would say we should do that. Uh, do but we because we're merging it, and replacing it with one mm -hmm. new one, I don't, it's, that seems a little bit like overkill. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. I'll uh, I'll do the PR and the issue at least to get this started for this new metric. I'm not doing it right now, but I'll do it <laughs> before the next meeting. Hey, Matt. I do have a question about the open demographics. Is there somewhere on here that addresses? 
um, role diversity as well. So I see you have education and you talk about the education levels and socioeconomic class, but I don't see anything that addresses role diversity. I don't think so. I mean, I'd have to pull it up. And so you're talking about like the link out that we always use for demographics. Yeah. Check here, give me a second. share my screen here. And so is this what you're talking about, Emily? Um, yeah, I, I uh, went to the the hyperlink, the Open Demographics Initiative, and I just kind of looked through it. I just um, went through each of the questions and I just didn't Please. see, yeah, um, I didn't okay. see that, that addressed role diversity, which, you know, sometimes is really important in the perspective of, you know, the hierarchy, I guess. So could you, um, so yeah, let me um, stop me, share for a second. So I'm gonna share my screen again. And so this is the, GitHub repository for open demographics. And so this was started by Nikki Stevens. And we in the chaos project kind of identified this as a really good source for talking about demographic information. And you can see Georg and I are both on there as maintainers now to help Nikki just kind of with the management of this. So if, it, it'd be great if you, could you open an issue in here that might raise this point? Yeah, I can. That would be great. Do you need, you want me to paste the URL in the chat? Yes, I was just gonna ask that. Okay, I'll do that. And then So then I guess the sequence of events would be that paste the issue here, we can get that updated in the demographics questions, which I would suspect will go to the website that you were, that is that first link, Emily. And then subsequently that goes back to the, it's like do it here and it makes its way all the way back to the chaos metric. <laughs> from, no worries. So here, here's the source. All right, cool. Thank you for that. Um, all right. Okay, so the the next item on the agenda was um, inclusive leadership, and this was a a metric that's been released for quite a while, and it's here. And one of the conversations that we were having with respect to inclusive leadership, let me start over a second. So one of the things that we had talked about in the DEI working group was to not only um, put forward to Justin's point, like think about our focus areas or to think about new metrics that could exist in these focus areas, but also to reflect on the metrics that have been released in the past that like just to, just because it was released doesn't mean that it's a truth going forward and we've done this before in other working groups value for example has kind of re-looked at a metric that's been released and thought you know this one's a little bit different than the rest and maybe we should rethink about it or re-examine it so this was one that that was a little bit different just in terms of the implementation it was um, a little bit more um I guess maybe deliberate in how this metric was being promoted. So a lot of our metrics are, you know, like we're just trying to locate people in a particular area, whatever that 
whatever that metric might be or around a particular question. Um, and then give some guidance as to how, how um, people can think about kind of addressing that question. And so the, I'd say none of our metrics are absolutely like fully comprehensive. They're meant to locate people. And so I, um, not that, let's see. So there was a pull request in here. So I, that I opened a while ago and I'm wondering if somebody could maybe take a look at this. It's just a, a way to kind of rethink the metric based on conversations we've had in this working group. Trying to maybe simplify the language a little bit without also just getting rid of all of the work that was done prior, because a lot of this was brought forward by some really good people at Mozilla. And so it's kind of like keeping the spirit of the metric, you know, while getting it into the new template, while you get the idea, just trying to tighten it up a little bit. So I'm hoping somebody could maybe take a look at this pull request for me and provide feedback. It doesn't have to happen right now, but just provide feedback and thoughts. And this could be a This could be a, a multi-step process in terms of the PR. So, and Matt has taken a look at this. So, anybody interested in kind of helping in that one? Yes. I just I just assigned myself to the issue. I'll take a look at it this week. Okay. Thanks a lot, Justin. All right, cool, thank you. Um, all right. And I, you know, I think we're, we're about at the end of time here. Um, I, there was one thing I put on the list. This was with IEEE SA Open and Emily, I'm glad you're on the call because I know that there's some overlap between the work that you're doing and attendees from the Chaos Project. I was hoping you could kind of talk about that just a little bit. Mm -hmm. about the work that you're doing and kind of how we could support that work. Yeah, so um, right now I want to say that Matt Cantu is the lead facilitator in our badging initiative, okay. which um, I'm, I'm not in that group, so I'm not quite sure okay. where they are. Yeah, I'm not quite Probably. sure where they are, but um, we he has, you know, kind of brought over some of the um, chaos stuff, which I think is awesome that we have some synergies there. So he's helping us, you know, put together that stuff. And I'm not sure how many people they have in their group, but um, I can, we do have a technical advisory group workshop coming up. It's going to be on June 16th and it's uh, similar to a working group, but it's uh, focused on our uh, technical advisory group. So the last one we had was for marketing and this one's for technical. And then the other advisory group we have is community. And I believe they're rolling out their workshop in July or August, but um, I'll put the details in the chat. We have some pretty great um, open source enthusiasts that are there. We have speakers. And uh, so if any, we always welcome chaos, of course. So if you guys uh, would like to head on over to our stuff, I'll put that uh, in the chat so you can- What is the advice? What would be the, the kind of the request in attending? Would it be to talk about some of the work that we're doing or just to listen in and participate? Yeah, so it's sort of like an unconference and we have breakout rooms. So we have the, the format is, you know, we have our speakers and during that, uh, their taped sessions, they are interacting with, you know, anyone that's attending the conference. And then we have our breakout rooms, which mm -hmm. we, we do have specific ones that are um, already predetermined per the community but we always allow for if there's enough interest if say chaos came and you know there's something in regard uh, regarding the technical advisory group that you'd like to work on you're, you guys are welcome to have your own breakout room and you know contribute back in that way um but yeah that's i mean it's pretty much an okay. conference workshop or I, I like to say working group but technically we can't say that so <laughs> So yeah, but that's what it is. <laughs> gotcha. That's an interesting limitation. If yes. you could, <laughs> um, if you could put 
That'd be great if you could put some of that info. Could you put it in the minutes? Because we're about ready to wrap up the meeting and you know Zoom with chat. It, yeah. Yes. It, dis it disappears <laughs> forever. Uh, yeah. Right. Yes, I will put that in there now. That'd be great. It is hidden somewhere on the hosts. I, I do get. I think yeah. it's it's somewhere. Yeah. Um, but, um, all right. Oh, I had one. So thank you, Emily. I had one thought. Has anybody, okay, so this was for chaos kind. I'm sorry, I totally missed this. Has anybody ever um, had worked with an organization that does signing for presentations? So like if we had pre-recorded presentations, can you have people actually sign the presentation as well? Like, I mean, it's can, it can be done. I've seen it done. I've never done it. I know that's like thought. A, a American Sign Language? Yes. Yeah, so we would actually record the presentation, right? So say you would present, and we would give the presentation to somebody. I'm not even, this is just a thought I had this morning to actually sign the presentation and include that like as a small thumbnail or something is part of the presentation just a thought emily i'm sorry you had a comment too oh no i i didn't know if you were looking at um if in terms of software it can be done like zoom or um like we use big blue button so we're able to have everyone turn off their camera and have the presenter and then maybe the asl interpreter on screen as a presentation is going i feel like that's the easiest way unless you want it you know kind of baked into the presentation okay That's interesting. Okay, Justin. It was just a talk. Okay, I can reach out to Stephen and just kind of see. Yeah, so there's, no, there's definitely thought. folks, a little sidebar, but definitely in the RIT community, there's a lot of experience. We've been doing like open source with like accessibility for hard of hearing and deaf folks. There's just a lot of experience that you could probably tap into and wisdom if you have, can okay. just get like 30 minutes with SJ. That would be great because I mean, of course, this is a service that we would pay for, right? Um, but it's just a thought for our presentations. Okay. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Kevin. Did you have a comment? It looks like you're trying to, you're maybe thinking something. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There's, I've got some, I'm outside. There are some distractions out here. So, <laughs> all right. I was just trying to read your, <laughs> all right, cool. All right, everybody. This was, this was really great. It's great to see everybody. Um, thanks for coming and thanks for all of your insight um, every week and we'll see you around. Okay. All right. See you around. Bye -bye. Take, take care, everybody. Bye.